Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pulse. We're here with just myself, Tamara, and Tom this week. Jen and Adam are on an on site meeting. So we're going to get started going through all the changes, and there were a lot of changes yes, there were. in the Microsoft roadmap. Tom, why don't you go ahead and kick us off with your favorite things in, in development? Sure. Um, a couple things that I saw that are kind of cool. One is Outlook in Outlook for Windows reactions. Now they've had a smaller type of reactions in Outlook for the web. They had a little thumbs up indicator, uh, but they're expanding this out both on the website and in the Outlook for Windows. So you're going to see thumbs up, laugh, heart, celebrate, or shed a tear in reaction to emails in Outlook. Apply your sentiment and see the reactions of others in emails and Outlook without sending or receiving incremental emails. I think this is really nice in the fact that if somebody sends out an email that you really like or the sad news or whatever, you can do a quick emoticon. The person who actually sent the email will get an indicator or get some response back that says, hey, so-and-so did this, but you don't end up having emails going back and forth going, oh, sorry to hear that, you know, and just, you've got a whole lot of stuff going on and people are responding late and you've got an email thread that's impossible to follow. So I'm really liking the fact that you'll have these particular reactions that you can look at. Also, uh, as part of Microsoft Viva, there's going to be schedule send suggestions from Viva Insights in the Teams chat. So if you're out there and you're in a Teams chat and you say, blah, 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 click send, it's actually going to be able to say, hmm, you know, this person's work hours are from 8 to 5, and you're sending this at 4.30 in the morning, or worse, 10 o'clock at night. Um, you might want to rethink when you're sending this, or you can actually do the schedule, which says, I'm putting it out there right now, but I don't want it to be sent to like 8 o'clock in the morning. I think this is awesome, especially for management. Because a lot of times people will go, oh, my boss sent this at 930. I need to get on and respond to it. When in reality, the boss was just putting something out there because they thought of it and they didn't want to lose that chain of thought at the time. So I'm really liking the fact that Viva will tell you, mm, may not be a good time. Here, let me help you schedule it for a time that is actually beneficial for work-life balance. So I think those two are really cool. Um, the Outlook one is for the worldwide tenant due in October this month, and Viva is also worldwide due in October for this month. Great. And then we have Microsoft Teams virtual appointment app. So this is going to provide a single location where professionals and administrators can schedule and manage scheduled and on-demand virtual appointments in Microsoft Teams. View available appointment insights and analytics and get real-time status updates in a queue view and send appointment reminder. Then what goes along with that is Microsoft Teams on-demand virtual appointments, which enables on-demand business to company, business to business, or business to customer, sorry, appointments <laughs> to allow customers to meet with staff in businesses or departments right away without requiring them to schedule it in advance. Along those lines, go ahead, Tom. I said nice. Yeah. Then we also have virtual appointments, premium analytics. To me, premium means money. Uh, and the admin analytics and reporting for Teams virtual appointments. So that's coming up. And along with that is virtual appointments, calendar analytics, and let me see if there's anything else that has to do with that. I think, oh, virtual meetings, virtual appointment, a new Teams meeting type for business to customer meetings. So virtual appointments uh, is a new meeting type tailored toward business to customers meetings with people outside of your organization. So when using this meeting type, guests will get a meeting invitation that includes important appointment details to make joining easy. And they can join from any device. No need to install Teams. And an experience, a comfortable pre-appointment virtual waiting room. I imagine a virtual waiting room with like virtual magazines and virtual <laughs> coffee. Virtual until plants you're ready in the to begin. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all coming out in December 
of this year, so before the end of the year. Tom, was there anything else in development that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, there's a couple that I'm going to mention. Just actually, there's three that I'm going to mention. Um, uh, one set, Outlook for iOS and Outlook for Android, those both now support scheduled send. So when you're using your mobile device to send an email, what you can do is when you um, want to do a scheduled send, you choose when to send, you click select dot 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 when writing an email, and that'll give you the chance to go ahead and give it a give it an actual time for it to be sent. This is due in November, or I'm sorry, October for iOS and December for Android. That's going out to worldwide. Uh, the second one <clears throat> is whiteboard text formatting. This brings text formatting functionality in whiteboard, optimizing the default font types for text boxes and allowing you to format text among other functionalities. They've been doing a lot of work with whiteboard lately, and I'm glad to see that it's actually being brought up to a level where internally, the company I work at, we won't keep hearing, but I want to use Mural. Mural's better. <laughs> um, they're getting closer now, which is really nice. That is going out to the entire spectrum, GCC, GCC high and worldwide multi-tenant. Don't see it on DOD though. So you're not looking to get that one right away. We don't and even have whiteboard in DOD. Well, that could explain why they're not getting optimized text board either. Yeah. <laughs> and October uh, of this year. And then the one that I'm looking at going, really, did you have to do that? Forms, <laughs> animated backgrounds for forms. In oh. Create engaging and inviting forms to attract your audience by using a large selection of new animated backgrounds. Yeah, there may be a good reason for it, but I can't think of it right now. This is almost like, you know, I want the bouncing baloney on your old, uh, you know, Netscape Navigator browsers. And it's like, God, do I really want to have movement? Yeah, maybe this will be more for the education sphere with yeah. elementary school age children. Let's hope so, because I know some people go, oh, this is cool, and they're going to have a bunch of movement in their form, and it's not going to attract the audience. It's going to distract the audience. Overpowered. <laughs> good, bad, or otherwise, that's there going to be DOG, CCC, or GCC, GCC High, and worldwide this month. Have We're all so excited about that. <laughs> So, and yeah, then, that's about it for me. Okay, Microsoft Lift got a ton of love this week. So, in Microsoft Lift, rules packaged into out of the box list templates. Also, rules packaged into custom list templates. Create a list from a CSV. This one I think is really cool. Spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that when it does that import to create the new list, it also copies the schemas, so you get the custom formatting, the choice pills, the rich text-based editing, everything. That is really cool. Yeah. Plus the approvals integration. So Microsoft Lift templates will begin leveraging integration with the approvals app in Microsoft Teams. And when you specify the approval within your list item, the request will appear in the approvals app in Teams and can be approved directly in the list once approved the list item status is updated. I didn't mean for my voice to go up so high, but I am really <laughs> excited about that. And also a new lookup column type support. So create lookup columns in modern list user interface, no settings page required. This means you can program a list item or a column to look up to another set of data of pre-populated managed choices. And we're pleased to expand the column types that are now supported when looking up from other lists. So Boolean, the yes, no checkbox, the choice column, and the multiple choice column, plus format. And then the last one is, which one? oh yeah, this is it, the calendar view. Now we've had the calendar view for a long time, but they're adding a week layout which I get a lot of requests for because you can only show like three or four things on the month view and they want to see everything for the day. So I think that's going to be very, very helpful. Tom, was there anything else in development you wanted to talk about? No, I think I'm good to move into rolling out. All right, why don't you take us on in? 
Okay, uh, there's only two enrolling out that I see that I wanted to mention because a lot of these ones that are enrolling out we've talked about prior when they were in development. One is in Microsoft Teams, when you're doing a search on chat, it's going to show you the entire chat conversation thread after clicking on the search message results. So it has been a situation where you do a search, you see the word in the line of the in the line of the chat that you wanted, and you click on it, and you get that one line of the chat with absolutely no context going on, yeah. which is yeah. very frustrating. Now it's going to actually show you what was ahead of that line, what's below that line, so you've actually got the entire content and context of what's been going on there. I think that is a huge change. Really looking forward to seeing that one in the tenant, and that's coming basically to everything, and it should be rolling out and available to you this month. The other one is on Microsoft Streams. They're doing a new revamped mobile app for iOS and Android, completely rebuilt for the whole, you know, give you access to Microsoft Stream Classic and the uh, stream on SharePoint videos. The one thing I just want to point out on this is there is a note in this one that says, note the general release of the rebuilt uh, stream mobile app will lack certain features that may be critical to some users, such as video recording, uploading and offline downloads. As we continue to build out the revamp mobile app, we expect to add these features in 2023. Mind you, you don't have a whole lot of choice over the fact you're going to yeah. get this thing, yeah. but it's going to be broken when you get it if those things are really critical <laughs> to you. So um, just keep that in mind, not that you can do anything about it, but hey, yeah. you know, it's just one of those caveats that you'll come in one day and your boss will be upset and you'll just have to sit there, grin and take it. Yeah. So one thing I'm interested in is the SharePoint security granular conditional access policy to be a sensitivity level. For SharePoint online sites. So admin will have the ability to use Azure AD conditional access policies to trigger multi factor authentication, device and location policies on specific SharePoint site collections by simply attaching a CA policy to a license, a conditional access policy to the license. For example, a top secret label can now have a conditional access policy that requires MFA when accessing the site. This feature is for GCC high and DOG environments and tracks on the roadmap as a different item. So for the this is for worldwide in GCC, but the one for GCC high and DOD is tracked as a separate item. And I'm just grabbing this ID now. And see when that's expected out. Uh, also, this is exciting. Upload documents from OneDrive for Business for e signature. When creating an e sign request in approvals in Teams, users can now upload documents from OneDrive for Business. This is coming out in October. And it's for everybody. Everybody gets to play this game. DOD, GCC, GCC High, and worldwide. Or the worldwide oh. environment, not the web, because that was an even more people. <laughs> uh, one thing just to mention as a side note on that one. Yeah. One of the announcements that came out of Ignite this week, or last week, is that not only are they still doing all the approvals where you can e-sign and all this kind of stuff with your third-party uh, integrations, but it sounds like Microsoft is working on a first-party uh, e-signature solution. So if you're concerned about, oh, this has to go out of our environment to Adobe or whatever to be signed and come back and the whole bit, Microsoft is working on a solution that basically will have its own e-sign signature. The whole thing stays within the Microsoft environment and you don't have to leave. So if that's been a concern for you, kind of keep your eyes open for that one. Great. Anything else in rolling out you want to touch on, Tom? Nope, I think I'm good for rolling out and ready to go to launch. Fabulous. Why don't you start us off and launch? So I'm going to talk about two different things, ones combined. Uh, SharePoint People Web Part Medium Cards. So if you've been using the People Web Part on SharePoint Pages, you've had the choice between a really small one, which just basically gives you the name of the person and their title, 
or one that's really large, which gives you that information, plus 255 characters of additional text you can put in there. Unfortunately, that takes up a whole lot of space, and if you don't put that much information in there, tough, it still takes up a whole lot of space. They now have a medium, so it's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, too hot, too cold, just right. Uh, the medium allows you to do 50 characters, which means it's good for just the real quick, uh, maybe how long the person's worked here, or um, you know, just some little snippet of information. It's like 50 characters, and it doesn't take up nearly as much space as the big one does, but it gives you a little bit more information than the little tiny one does. So that's out there now. Take a look at that one. The other two I'm going to mention... I'm going to mention just because I botched up a demo so badly yesterday on these two. They're both whiteboard related. So again, in the fact that they're doing changes to whiteboard, they now have URL support and embedded online videos. URL support is cool. Before you could always put the URL in there and you could click on the URL live grand. Well, now it does a dynamic rich preview on it. So let's say you're at bing.com you paste that URL into your whiteboard and it actually shows you like the image of what's on bing.com at that point with the clickable link that's actually the word, not the big old long hairy URL. That's really cool. The other one that messed me up big time was the embedded online video where I went out to OneDrive, grabbed one of my videos I had, just did a copy on the URL link, went in, pasted into the OneDrive or pasted into the uh, whiteboard and poof, your video's in the whiteboard, and it's awesome, and you can click on it, and everybody can watch it. Just make sure when you do that, the people who are on the whiteboard also have access to the video, because I was trying to demo this, and pretty much everybody on the call was like, I can't get to it. It's because it was in my OneDrive, and I really hadn't shared it with too many people, as in none. So it's a cool <laughs> <Not> feature. <laughs> Yeah, it was not one of my best demos of everything. Of course, my boss was on the call. Awesome. Um, but yes, that's one that if you want to, I could see this being really good if you had a template that you had out there and you wanted to have like a preview video that people could go out and look at or do whatever, you can now put those videos out in the whiteboard. It'll be embedded in the whiteboard and you don't have to just give them a link to go off to somewhere else to get it. So cool feature. I just didn't execute it terribly well. Yeah, we all learn. Yeah. It is a lesson you will not forget. Awesome, because I keep reminding it. You know, yes. Here's the roadmap. Here's how you screwed up yesterday. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> Microsoft funny. Team Informs Ranking Poll, the ranking question type has been added to the polls app within Microsoft Team. Meeting owners can easily create and launch ranking polls to increase engagement and collect input from their meeting attendees as well as share the results live. I love that share the results live so people can get that, um, where do I fit in? What's in it for me? And that's all we have for lots, really, aside from an awful lot of security stuff. Yeah, we do have one cancellation for Microsoft Teams RM, I'm sorry, RTMP-N, for Teams live events, this is removed as a real time duty. messaging protocol. Thank you. In you're <laughs> uh, it's basically a duplicate of another item, so you're not losing anything with this being canceled. It's just covered with something else that's already out there. So, with that, I think we covered everything. We did, and thank you so much for tuning in. Jen and Adam will be back next week, and we'll be doing an ignite recap. So, stay tuned for that. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Bye. Bye everyone.